I teach thousands of people how to tune their Holly EFI systems with my online training program, Tune the Trilogy. If you'd like to learn more about that, click the link in the description. But the reason for this video is here lately, I've been getting a lot of people that are having the same problem, whatever you want to call that. It's a piece of crap. It doesn't work. Where their actual ignition timing is not matching what they have in their timing table. And they're trying to figure out the reasons why. So in this video, we're going to cover one, how to be able to tell if your timing and your commanded timing and your actual timing match. Uh, we're going to take a look at some different common things that happen in the program that guys maybe overlook and that's the cause of their problems. And then we're also going to take a look at what I would consider to be more of a oddball example. So we're going to take a look at a data log and a tune file that I was sent by somebody that was at the racetrack and kind of in a panic. So we'll go over all of these and at the end of this, You'll both know how to tell if your actual timing and your commanded timing are matching. And hopefully you'll know how to troubleshoot and be able to figure out why you're having the problem that you're having. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is basically uh, me explaining what I'm talking about here. So if you go into our ignition table, uh, these first few ones I've kind of made up some uh, imaginary examples just to paint the picture a little bit easier. But you can see here our entire ignition table is at 20 degrees. So what's happening is guys are having a you know commanded value of 20, but then when they come over into their views, they can see that their actual ignition timing is maybe you know 18 or 10 or 25 or whatever it is. It doesn't match the actual ignition table. So the first one that is kind of active on nearly every tune, unless you went out of your way to turn it off, is if we go into our idle ICF and we go into IAC settings, if you have idle spark enabled right here, this is going to move the ignition timing regardless of what you have in your ignition table. So if we go to idle speed, again, this is, I just put an arbitrary thousand RPM to keep it consistent here, but if our actual engine speed was at 1200 RPM, so it was higher than the target, our ignition timing is going to be retarded below our 20 degree value in order to try to bring the actual engine RPM down. And consequently, if our actual engine RPM was at 800 RPM, it's going to be increasing the ignition timing above 20 degrees to try to get to our commanded value of 1000. So this is probably 90% of the people that ask me about this scenario. It's at idle and they're trying to figure out why the ignition timing is moving. So. If you don't want that to happen, then just simply uncheck this box. And now you're going to be just running your timing value that you have commanded in your ignition table. Now that one's probably one of the more common ones because it's easy enough to just actually see what the ignition timing is versus your timing table at idle. Uh, but once you start driving and going down the racetrack, all of the other things, it can be a little bit more tricky to see, especially if your table isn't a flat value. It can be a little bit more tricky to see if the timing and commanded timing match. So. The first thing that we need to do, and we can do this both in our live uh, view and then also in our data log, it's exactly the same thing, but we want to monitor our ignition timing as a channel, obviously, but we want to actually add another channel as well. So if we go down in here to our views, and this is a sniper, so if you click on this little wrench and some of the other softwares, it has an E, I guess, for edit. But if we click on this, you can see this view right here, we can just name this timing. We have RPM TPS ignition timing, uh, but the channel that we want to add is actually right here. It's called base timing. We drag it over here. We can just click OK. You can save it if you want. Uh, so now we have ignition timing and we have base timing. And really all that this is doing is base timing is showing us what is here in this table and ignition timing is showing us what is actually happening. So if we have 20 for our base timing and our ignition timing is 20, then everything matches and you don't have anything to worry about. But if our base timing is 20 and our ignition timing is 10, then that means that there is a modifier of minus 10 degrees happening somewhere and we have to go and find it. When we get to the last example, uh, we will be looking at these two in a data log. Uh, so the setup in the data log is exactly the same, but I don't wanna waste your time with that right now. So uh, this is the easiest way to be able to say if you're having this problem or not. Now, speaking of easy, the next one we're gonna look at is probably the easiest to find and fix if you're having this problem outside of the ignition timing example I showed you. So for this one, we're going to, if you're not already there, we're gonna hop into the ignition ICF. 
and then we're going to come here to timing versus coolant temp and timing versus air temp. So if you click on these and if you have any numbers in here, so this one's all zeroed out, so obviously it's not having any type of an impact, but if you had five degrees, uh, then you would be adding five degrees. So if you had a base timing of 20, your actual ignition timing would show 25. Now, generally speaking, uh, this doesn't have a flat value like this. It will be based off of actual coolant temperature. Uh, this one's scaled kind of crazy. So if you uh, scale this a little bit more normal. Uh, so if we had maybe above 230 degrees, had something along the lines of this. So what would happen if your coolant temperature was at 230 degrees, uh, you'd be pulling, you know, negative two degrees of timing. So this one's easy to keep an eye on because they're already kind of pre-programmed and set up for you. Same thing for timing versus air temp. So on this, the scaling would be nowhere remotely close to that, but uh, same deal. And just to switch it up a little bit, let's say 40 degrees and below, you wanted to add two degrees of timing. So if your air temperature was, you know, here at 30 degrees, then you'd be adding two degrees. Uh, so again, if we had a base timing of 20, uh, we would now be showing 22 for our ignition timing. Okay, the next example I have for you is a simple checkbox. You can toggle this on and off. I actually don't see this as a problem too often, but I talk to a lot of other tuners that actually see uh, this as a problem all of the time. So I'm not sure why I don't see it and they do, but I'm gonna show it to you anyways. So on this one, we're gonna hop into Terminator X. And if we come into our inputs and outputs here, and we click on configure, if you see this right here, warning enable timing offset, and you can see that it's checked on and it has a modifier of negative 10 degrees. So anytime the warning is enabled, it's just gonna pull a 10 degrees out of the ignition table everywhere. Uh, so this one, unless you're very specifically wanting to remove timing for whatever reason, I would encourage you both, not only to just uncheck it, and this doesn't really matter, this is just, I don't know, some a habit that I've gotten into over the years. So before I just uncheck something like this, I'll set it to zero and then I'll uncheck it. Just makes me feel better. Uh, obviously just unchecking it should do the trick, but you never know. And then uh, once you do this, make sure that you uh, load the file to the ECU. One other thing worth noting with this is usually warning based timing offsets will only let you go negative or they're set up to be negative, uh, but if you go and type 10 into this, uh, it will actually allow you to put a positive value in there. So if you are gonna use this as a safety, I can't think of really any reasons why you would have a positive number, so just make sure that you input a negative value. And again, just so you know kind of where I'm at to get to this, we are under the inputs and we're setting up custom inputs. And depending on the type of input, they don't all have this option. So like this ground input, uh, doesn't give you the option but if we go to the thermistor option again it's right here we can toggle this on and off so keep an eye on that go through all your custom inputs and make sure you don't have this enabled unless you know that you have it enabled and set it up the way that you want it to be set up okay this next example is one that i see all the time and this one is a little bit weird to me because people always try to argue with me on this one and they'll you know contact me or whatever and they'll say their timing and base timing doesn't match and I basically have to try to explain that if those two numbers don't match, that there's some sort of a modifier in the tune that is causing that to happen. Something is wrong here. Most people are familiar with the ignition timing and then the temperature based timing offsets, maybe even the input warning offset. Uh, but a lot of times, especially when somebody like buys a car used or secondhand, or maybe they paid a tuner to do it and they're not too familiar with what the tuner did. But ultimately what ends up happening is they'll have some sort of an offset that is active uh, through a custom table. So let's take a look at that real quick. So if you come up here to this table looking icon, click on that. You can have a custom table set up through any of these. So the easiest thing to do is just go through and you can see here where this says table active. And the next thing is you see this table type, it'll show you what type of offset it is. So none of these are active in this tune. Uh, there's a green dot when you have one that is active. See, nothing's active. And here's one uh, that is active. 
So the big thing that we're looking here is for the table type. So if this, this table type is timing offset, uh, but if this table type was fuel flow offset, then this wouldn't have an effect on the ignition timing, obviously. So in this example here, anything below 12 volts is removing five degrees of timing. So again, a lot of time guys will just have tables active that they're not aware of being active or whatever the case may be. Uh, so you can disable it. If it's a table that you might want to toggle off and on depending on circumstance, like if this was a like a launch retard type of a thing and you maybe use this at the racetrack, then you can just disable it so that way you can toggle it back on. But if it's something that you, you never want to use, I would encourage you to do what I said before. And I would just zero this table out. Uh, then disable it and then make sure that you load this to the ECU. And the reason I keep saying make sure that you load this to the ECU is going to make a lot more sense when we go to the next example. Okay, this next example is a little bit more unique. I don't see this one uh, too often. However, it kind of falls back in line with the last example. Uh, we've gone through the, the previous examples pretty quick because they're all pretty straightforward. So in this example, we're going to look at a tune file, a data log, and I'm going to kind of show you the process of uh, one, looking at the ignition timing and the base timing to see that there is a discrepancy. Uh, and I'm going to show you a little bit of my process on how I will typically go about uh, figuring out the hows and whys of uh, why those two numbers don't match. So kind of depending on how I'm contacted and what I'm sent at that point in time will determine how I go about figuring out uh, the problem. So if somebody just sends me a global file, then I'll go about a little bit differently than if they send me a data log and a global file. So I'll just show you real quick how I would go about this if I was sent just a global file and then we're going to take a look at the actual data log and kind of reverse engineer, figure out what's going wrong that way. So for this particular example, uh, we're using a Dominator ECU. Not that it matters because this process is exactly the same whether you're using Dominator and HP Terminator X or a Sniper. So a lot of times you just get sent an email with a global file saying, hey, my timing and ignition timing aren't matched. So the first thing you gotta do is just make sure that they're not talking about it idle because again, that's normal. That's gonna be active on every car. So the first thing I would do is just come into ignition timing, modifiers, and look at these two, which are both zeroed out. So obviously that's not our problem. And the next thing I would do is go into inputs and outputs. And in this case, they do have a bunch of different inputs. Uh, so again, you could just go through all of these and make sure that the timing offset is not enabled and none of these are, so I'm not gonna bore you through clicking through each one of these. And then we'll go into custom tables. And then 99 out of 100 times, uh, what would actually work just fine is if you just click on each one of the uh, tables that has a green dot, the ones that are active. Like you could see this one's timing offset. So this very well could have been causing issues. So once I see that there are actually timing offsets happening, at that point you almost have to look at a data log to sort of see what's going on. So in this instance, uh, this table is only active when the trans brake button is pushed and the throttle is above 50%. And just from the email I was sent, like this was a problem uh, the whole way down the track, not just on the trans brake. So again, we sort of would suspect uh, that this is not what they're referring to. So anytime you're asking somebody for help, always send them a data log and a global file. Otherwise, it's just kind of guessing. So let's take a look at the log that we were sent. So now that I have our log pulled up, the first thing that we want to do is add base timing. And I always try and put ignition timing and base timing right next to each other. It's not just kind of naturally going to do that on this one since there aren't a bunch of other channels. But if you have timing here, base timing here, and 20 other things in between, it's not quite as easy to see. So I'll always overlap the two of these. And I do the same thing with my air fuel and my target air fuel. Just makes it easy to see. So if we come in here and take a look, first thing I'll do is just kind of click around and see what's going on. But as you can see here, we have, at this particular point, we have the mouse. Uh, we have a three degree difference between base timing and actual timing. So there's a modifier active somewhere. So we'd have to go and hunt that down. And then another thing you can do just to sort of show you how this base timing works. So if we go back to the tune file ignition, um, you can see it's it's highlighting right here at 18 degrees, but sometimes it's a little easier to see if you go to data log and then activate overlay and it'll just uh, show you everywhere that you've been. So we're asking for 18, we're getting 15. Uh, so then you'd have to go on the hunt. So the next thing that we need to do is add some more channels. And let's assume that we haven't looked at the global file, that this is just us looking at a data log. I'll usually throw 
the air temp and coolant temp offsets on here just because, again, these are really, really common that guys will have some numbers populated that they're hitting that they're not expecting to. Uh, but in this case, again, if we click through, you can see that nothing is active as far as those go. So the next thing that we get to do is where it gets a little bit more tedious and entertaining, so to speak, is now we have to go through and start adding basically anything that looks like it would be a potential timing modifier. And when it's the channels that are labeled like the defaults by Holly, uh, it's usually a whole lot easier. It's when you get into the custom channels, especially if you did not name them, where things uh, can get a little bit tricky. So, and then the further over you go to the right, you start getting past all of the default stuff. And then you start getting into, as you can see, the, the custom named stuff. So from here, I would say launch retard, three step maybe sometimes if they stay active, I guess the same would be for launch retard. Uh, this one says timing. So we're going to throw it on there regardless of anything else. Drive shaft timing offset, crankshaft timing offset. Shift timer, probably unlikely, but we'll just throw it on there anyways. Race trans launch. We can also throw a sensor warning, sensor caution on there. So if one of these is active, then one of the inputs may be active or one of the in input timing offsets could be active. So now we can come through and I absolutely hate these stupid white bars on the side. So just out of habit, the absolute first thing I do anytime I'm in a data log is turn all these off. And then now you just start kind of clicking around and seeing what you see. So you can see we're down here. We have a couple of things active or whatever. Our base timing and our ignition timing don't match, but we have this spool timing here. This is when we are actually on the trans brakes, so this is not what we're kind of worried about. We're mostly worried about this up top, so we can just zoom in. Now you can see our ignition timing and base timing should be matching now, but they're not. But if you look here, our launch retard is active. And here's that spot we were checking out earlier. So we won at 18 degrees, we had 15 degrees. And here is where our mysterious three degrees of timing retard is coming from. So now we know we need to go into our custom tables and look at our launch retard. Go back to the global file, advanced tables. And this is why I said that this one was a little bit unique because we do not have a launch retard on any of our active files or active tables rather, but we do have a launch retard. And what's even more interesting is this is all zeroed out kind of how I like to do it. So after discovering this and then talking back through email with the owner of the car. He did have the launch retard active on previous tune revisions and then disabled it. So ultimately my guess would be one of two things happened. Either one, he thought he uploaded this file to the ECU and it didn't happen. So, you know, get busy, you think you did things, whatever the case may be. Or I've seen it, you know how when you make a major change, uh, the ECU tells you, gives you a warning pops up on the screen that says you need to cycle the key. Uh, so maybe that is what didn't happen. And then, uh, you know, generally people say that the ECU just didn't listen or didn't accept it or whatever the case may be, but I've never seen that happen. So again, my guess would be that somehow, some way, this just did not get loaded to the ECU, even though they thought that it did. All right, now you should be able to, one, identify if your timing table values match your commanded timing. And if they don't, now you know all of the different ways to go about searching through the tune and a data log in order to figure out why they don't match so they make the adjustments needed so that your timing is what you actually want it to be.